It was a manifesto pledge back in 2019. It was something that the Housing Secretary Michael Grove described as daylight robbery, which one must assume is a deliberate reference to another seriously unfair property tax, the window levy of 1696. Nowadays, though, it's less about your windows and more about the ground beneath your feet. Ground rent is a charge paid by those in leasehold properties that's been described by the Competition and Markets Authority as neither legally nor commercially necessary. They saw no persuasive evidence that consumers receive anything in return for the hundreds of pounds that they are forced to pay on top of everything else. They also did not think that there was a good reason to believe that ground rent improved the standard of estate management. All in all, a swindle. And Michael Gove was ready, he said, to reduce ground rent to zero or to a tiny amount rather than the hundreds of pounds that normally gets paid uh, every year. But this change now isn't going to happen. Why? The answer seems to be pensioners. The, it's reported that the Treasury has said that reducing ground rents to zero or next to nothing would seriously damage the bill billions of leasehold properties that are either owned by pensioners or by pension funds. The Residential Freehold Association estimates that UK pension funds have more than 15 billion quid invested in ground rents, which are considered a stable asset that deliver reliable returns over long time frames, and that the total value of investment in ground rents exceeds 30 billion pounds. Which is a bit grim, isn't it? Too many people have their financial futures reliant on a feudal system of home ownership that robs Peter to pay Paul, and the government is running scared of upsetting those pensioners. Is that what is happening here? They all know ground rent is terrible. They all know it's bad, that it's daylight robbery, they promise to get rid of it, but too much money is tied up in its continuation, so we're going to continue to let it happen. If you live in a leasehold property, if you pay this ground rent, you were told in 2019 if you voted a particular way, you could have that ground rent either removed or reduced to a peppercorn rate, basically peanuts. Turns out a lot of people are heavily invested in that rent, that ground rent being higher, their financial futures rely on it, and reports now suggest that the Treasury is backing them over you. Is that fair? 0345 6060 973. The government looks likely to breach that manifesto commitment. Do you agree with the reasons why? Darren Pither is the spokesperson for the Pensioners for Ground Rent Association. Thank you very much indeed for coming on the programme. What say you to the notion of reducing ground rent to zero or to peppercorn? Um, well, uh, the group is, of course, uh, against that for, um, for obvious reasons. Um, one of the main reasons is um, that uh, a lot of our members are relying on income or will be relying on their income for, um, for once they've um, retired from the from the workforce, and um, also um, it, it's it, it, it's pretty unconscionable that the government should be interfering with what are private contracts. Well, the government says it. Um, well, the government has made a commitment to quote interfere with those private contracts because it believes it to be unfair. The Competition and Markets Authority have made their view clear. They don't think that this is either legally or commercially necessary. And presumably, those people who have invested in this as part of their financial future understood that there might be some risks for doing so. Um, no, I don't think that's the case. I think they have always been considered extremely reliable income streams, ground rents. Um, that, that point about the, the, the Tory manifesto, I'm not here to defend the Tories at all. I've not read their manifesto, but I understood it was just new ground rents going forward, which were um, to be um, abolished, which of course happened in 2022. Um, I'm not certain, perhaps you can tell them otherwise, I'm not certain it was ever um, in mm -hmm. intended to apply to all ground rents going back. Why should a person pay ground rent if, it ha if they receive no commercial benefit from doing so, if it doesn't improve the standard of estate management, in order to guarantee the financial futures of some of your members? I haven't got that much time for the argument that there's no service. Um, it's, it, when, when somebody buys a flat, they, they know they have, they have to pay a ground rent. So you pay £200,000 for your flat and you'll know your solicitor will tell you you're paying £200 a year for your ground rent going forward. So um, I don't really have that much truck with people who are now turning around and complaining. Now, there are some some very unfortunate people who got caught by some some awful 10-year um, doubling leases, which you might want to talk about a bit later mm -hmm. on. 
and everybody can have sympathy for those people. I think a lot of those are being remedied, thankfully, um, uh, remedies are being sought between the freeholders and the leaseholders. So uh, hopefully that situation is easing for a lot of people. But for millions and millions of people, ground rent is a, is a very small amount. It's like one, two hundred pounds a year. Um, and it's, uh, it, like I say, it's not a service. I mean, it, it's, freeholders do do things for this. Um, you know, I used to be a freeholder. I, I still own a few small ground rents, but I used to be a part owner in, in a larger company. And um, we and, and I know other freeholders, they, they're often sort of funding insurance premiums up front. They're maintaining a lot of um, uh, insurance records for insurance purposes. Uh, we had to fund a hell of a lot of... Um, so it's an safety. admin fee. It's an admin fee that does the job of, of providing that admin as well as guarantee, well, guarantee Darren, your financial future when you become a pensioner. So what was an admin fee? The, the, the ground rent. It paid to deal with some admin for insurance costs, whatever. You say it's a tiny sum of money, okay. even yep. though the CMA say, actually, this isn't commercially necessary. There is no reason for this to happen every year or for it to be put up uh, yeah, sort of slightly randomly. Now, yeah. so from 2022 onwards, it's not happening. I guess the CMA is right going forward, but this can't be so applied if it's, if it's, But if it's not right from 2022, why would it... Be right. It's in a contract before 2022. It was a contract, and somebody bought, bought their flat and signed the lease. That was the contract. And you're happy for this um, apparent unfairness to continue as long as it guarantees income uh, for those pension funds that have invested in it con in its continuation or in people other, continuing other to pay. Other those it. people that are caught by their ten-year doublers, I don't see it's that unfair because most of, most of it. I think I think the government's own figures said that the average ground is rent was around three hundred odd pounds a year, mm -hmm. and I mean I think it's probably a lot less than that. Um, I just don't see how it's such an unfair payment. And people should pay it because? Because they signed the lease to pay it. Good to speak to you, Darren Pither, spokesperson for the Pensioners for Ground Rent Association. 11 minutes past four. Listening to that is Harry Scoffin, founder of Free Leaseholders, a campaign that seeks to free leaseholders via a wholesale move to common hold. Thanks for coming on the programme, Harry. Um, your response to what Mr Pither's saying, this was a, an agreement entered into freely. It was written in black and white. Why is the government getting involved? Leave it alone. Well, the government have been talking about dealing with ground rent now for seven years. These investors could have divested in all that time. The fact they're clinging on to a fundamentally unfair, dubious income stream of someone else's home is completely wrong. It isn't a normal asset class, this. And the fact is, is that there are some very powerful people in this country and also in overseas, uh, you know, tax havens that have managed to get this fake news pumped out into number 10 in the Treasury that pensioners and pension funds are somehow wrapped up in this. Now, we talk about the Pensioners for Ground Rent Group. Now, when we talk about buy-to-let landlords that happen to be elderly, we don't call them pensioners. They don't go to the post office to collect their pension. Mm -hmm. They get their 100. The fact is, is that it's very willful distortion. Even, and this is going to sound funny, but the Pensions and Lifetime Saving Association, they had changed their position last year they said less than 4% of all pension holdings in this country are in residential and commercial I'm sure. property. I, I'm, I'm not taking my um, facts from them. The Residential Freehold Association estimates that UK pension funds have more than 15 billion invested in ground rents, which are considered a stable asset that deliver reliable returns over long time frames, and that the total value of investment in ground rents exceeds 30 billion quid. That's a lot of money. You can see why they would want to protect their interests. You say that they should have divested it. I guess the question is, who would they sell it to? Well, let's be honest here. The Residential Freehold Association would say that. They're not representing pension funds. They are a group of freeholders that are trying to keep this income stream going ahead. The government's own data shows that less than 1% of pension holdings are in residential property. The fact is it's get out your microscope territory here and they, they've lost the moral argument. It's actually refreshing to hear someone from the freeholder lobby debate us publicly. But normally they hide behind paid media and corporate lobbyists and, and, and basically blogs on the internet. They don't want to debate consumer advocates. And the fact is service charges for a service Ground rent is for nothing. As you've said yourself, the Competition and Markets Authority mm -hmm. have noted that it wasn't legally necessary nor commercially necessary. But I'll come, an an of... come back to Darren Pither's point, Mr Scoffin. They entered into this agreement. This was entered into uh, freely. It was on the paper. Pfft, what are you going to do? 
the history of leasehold reform is to basically challenge and change terms retrospectively of leasehold contracts. That goes back to Margaret Thatcher, Lord Randolph Churchill in the 1800s. If contracts are unfair and they're predatory and they're abusing one party, clearly, because a lot of these ground rents, by the way, it's not like we can negotiate with the developer. Mm -hmm. They're a false condition of sale. The fact is, if you want to put a roof over your head, you're going to have to buy that home. But you also the fact heard is him there's say, no bartering. You also heard him say, ah, oh, well... It's only a couple of hundred quid a year. It's not very much. So make up their mind. One minute they're saying this is vital income for them and they're going to be wiped off the face of the earth if ground rent grows. And now they're saying, well, actually, it's not a huge amount of money. So what is it? The fact is, if it's not a huge amount of money, actually allow the Conservative government to deliver a 2019 manifesto pledge that, you know what, is very popular still. 64% of Conservative voters, according to a recent opinion poll, want ground rents gone. 65% of 65-year-olds and over want it gone. These are pensioners. So pensioners haven't got the memo that they're going to be out on the streets and they're going to be in penury. It's gaslighting of the highest order. It's fake news. And the problem is, this is not about ground rent here. This debate is not about leasehold or leaseholders. It's about how the country's run. Is it run for the groups, very small people that are very wealthy? Or is it for the majority? Is it for the people that voted for a policy in the 2019 election? The fact is, all we want is to pay for a service and get a service. Ground rent is money for nothing. As my grandma would say, money for old rope, son. The fact is, that's what it's about. And who is number 10 in the Treasury working for? Is it for these rent seekers, middlemen and extortionists? I'm not saying anyone in particular, but the ones that are demanding a ground rent and not providing any service in return. Or is it for normal people that have bought a home and they don't want to be ripped off in it. Mm. That's what it comes down to. And Parliament can change all the laws. The fact is, is that they're talking about Rwanda and all the rest of it, about human rights. I think many of your listeners would be, would be appalled to, to hear that some of the freeholder lobbies, they're not saying it today, but elsewhere they're invoking the ECHR, saying, well, we're going to sue the government mm -hmm. if they take away our ground rent. They're literally, you know, their supposedly human rights are more important than people that have paid a premium for their home. The fact is, freeholders only own... Okay. Typically, just 2.5% capital value in a block of flats. Leaseholders own the value. We are the homeowners. Let us be in control of our homes, our money and our lives. Let us take back control. Good to talk That's to you. what we want. Thank you for coming on. Harry Scoffin, founder of Free Leaseholders, a campaign that seeks to free leaseholders via a wholesale move to common hold. But at the moment, it would seem like the reporting in the papers has been that the Treasury won't let Michael Gove do the thing that he told you he was going to do in 2019, which is re to reduce ground rents to zero or basically nothing. Because as Mr Scoffin points out, some rich clients who are heavily invested in this, who thought this was an absolute safe bet and are getting upset about it apparently not being so. 03456060973 if you are a leasehold owner. I wonder what you make of this manifesto pledge looking like it's not going to happen.